Are you trying to collect public data from TikTok? Maybe you're a digital marketer and you're interested in matching influencers with people looking to purchase promotions. This public data from TikTok would be very valuable for you. Well, I hope you're sitting down because I've got some bad news when it comes to scraping TikTok data. They appear to be making it incredibly difficult using a little thing called signed requests. And we're gonna talk about what that means in this video. But don't worry, like everything in data scraping, there's always a way around this obstacle. It's just a matter of effort. So let's say I want to find some influencers talking about dad jokes. So I'm scrolling through all the posts that are hashtag dad jokes. And let's just say I want to get the contact information for everyone who posted with dad joke, including their email if they share it. And remember, we're only talking about public data. That's when people publicly share their email address because they have something to sell usually. The first thing we want to do is see if TikTok offers an API for consuming public data, but they don't. They only let us share to TikTok and embed videos from TikTok. So the next question is, well, where is the data on their website coming from? And we can use network inspection to figure that out. So I just right click on the page and hit inspect, then click on the network tab. And now I'm going to refresh the page and take a look at what's coming over the network tab to try and figure out where all these posts are being loaded from. So I'm going to click on this one that I saw earlier for reference and let the rest of the network traffic load. I can see it here. And I'm going to sort my network traffic by size. So I get the largest payloads first, which are more likely to contain the data I want. So when I take a look at this thing, it looks like I have a big list of what appear to be posts. And if I keep scrolling down this list, I can confirm I found the raw structured data for the post I'm interested in because I can see that it matches the caption here. And I can keep checking out the data structure and I can find some information on the author of the post, including his bio and email address, which he shared publicly, as well as other stats like how many followers he has, how many likes he has, etc. And TikTok also returns information about the post so I can see the other hashtags used in this post. So I could potentially go and look up those hashtag posts if they look interesting to me. And I can see other information about the post itself how many likes and shares it's got, etc. And I even get raw data about the video and media that's embedded, including what appeared to be downloadable links. So now you're probably saying, great, I get all these posts from this URL. So I can just copy this URL and access it whenever I want, right? Well, not so fast. TikTok thought ahead. And if you try and do this, like through a curl command, I'm copying now in Google Chrome, you're going to get in trouble because they use something called signed requests. So what this means is that if I go and try and let's say change this challenge ID or hashtag ID to something ending in 44 instead of 43, and I make that request, it's going to fail. It will only work with that specific challenge ID that we originally tested with. This is because of this field called signature here, which sort of acts like say a password that lets the TikTok server know that this is a legitimate request and it only works for a single ID or a request. So if I try to change anything in the request, like the challenge ID or any other part of the request, I'm also going to have to generate an entirely new signature with an algorithm that only the TikTok client, the web browser and the TikTok server know, which prevents us from arbitrarily accessing this URL outside of an official TikTok client. So what that means is that in order to access their unofficial API, we need to do it with a genuine web browser that's able to generate the signature that needs to be used to call that API. And that didn't stop these people from building an unofficial TikTok API, which uses a tool called Selenium to simulate a real web browser to generate that signature. And it looks kind of hacky. Uh, looks like they had to add this little bandaid here for being logged in, which is kind of sketchy. So. I'll link to this in the description. You can use it at your own risk. If you'd rather build your own custom solution, you can try using Selenium. Just uh, search for Python Selenium in YouTube. And there are a couple good tutorials on how to use Selenium to drive a Chrome browser with code. And I also found this here thing called Tick API, which is a paid API for accessing TikTok through a Selenium web browser. So they kind of do all that hard work for you. So you don't have to host your own Selenium infrastructure, which is nice. We can check out their documentation here and it looks pretty robust. Like it looks like you can do messaging and liking. So a lot of things you can do while you're logged into the app, which is risky from a legal perspective. 
Uh, so we can also see they have public endpoints here, which is safer from a legal perspective. For instance, getting the posts by hashtag, the example we just did, you could hypothetically query this paid API and they would make the request on your behalf for the hashtag you want to get. While these solutions from the open source community are always fun and interesting, and yes, they may work today, there's no guarantee that they'll work tomorrow. And they also most likely violate TikTok's terms of service, which most likely does not permit automated scraping of this data. So if you do go down any of these paths where you use the unofficial API or this paid API, you would still be guilty of automated access, meaning TikTok could cut off your access to TikTok and they could also potentially sue for damages if they could prove that. Now there is another way to get data out of TikTok that does not involve coding. It does not violate the terms of service, but it is manual and it is from a service that I provide. So disclaimer, this opinion is extremely biased. If you're interested, let me give you a quick walkthrough on how we can get all those hashtag posts with author information, including contact information using my method. So I'm simply gonna hop back on TikTok and then just hit the inspect button. Now I'm not gonna fiddle around with the network tab this time. I'm simply gonna refresh the page and just use TikTok normally in full accordance with their terms of service. I'm not doing anything fishy. I'm just scrolling around at the content I want to collect the underlying data for and process as a CSV file or look at it in Excel or something else. Once I'm done scrolling, then I go to the network tab and instead of fiddling around, I just hit this button labeled export har and this is gonna generate a file containing all of the data, the rich JSON data we saw earlier that TikTok sent to my browser in one convenient file we can then get the data out of. This is completely undetectable. TikTok cannot detect if we're doing this or not. So you're free to inspect the HAR file for yourself or you can use this freemium tool I provide. It's free and that you can put any HAR file here and it will automatically group together similar requests and let you access the raw JSON behind those requests. So here I can see all of the dad joke posts that were grouped together. I can identify the URL. And if I click this button here, it'll let me download the JSON completely free of charge, no login required, link in the description. So if you want, you can do this for all the individual requests and then write your own program to process the individual JSON files to make your life a little easier. But let's say you want to combine all of these files together. Well, if you have any paid Steve C data plan, link in the description, you can use the har file parsing function, which will automatically combine all of the JSON together from all the posts we scroll to into a series of collections, which contain all the combined data and also let us download it as a single CSV file. So here I can see I can download all 504 posts containing the stats as well as the author and their contact information as a single CSV file. So I don't have to go and manage all those different JSON files and figure that out for myself. I can do everything here in one fell swoop, get a CSV file with the contact information as well as stats for both the authors and the posts and have it in Google Sheets or Excel in a minute. Well, that sure was fun. And I hope I showed you that signed requests aren't the end of the world. They just make it more difficult to use automated scraping, which in general may not be the best idea, especially if a company tells you and is using signed requests to prevent automated scraping, it means they're proactively going to prevent it in the future. So anything you do that relies on automated TikTok access probably will stop working and they could come after you. So if you want to use my approach, it's safe because it does not violate the TikTok's terms of service since the collection of the data occurs while you manually use their website in accordance with their terms. Link in the description if you want to give it a try. And remember, it's a freemium product, so part of it is free forever. Thank you so much for watching. Please like it if you learned something. Let me know in the comments if there are any other TikTok APIs that you found or useful resources for other viewers. And please subscribe if you want to see more of these videos on how you can harness the power of public information for good. I'm looking at you, influencer marketers, because it just makes TikTok a more valuable platform. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay data driven.